forsaken, gather us in the blind and the lame. All right, let's do this. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to another Uper Farmer Cigar Garage Talks. Merry Christmas to you all. Uh, this video will actually be coming out the day after Christmas, if all goes well. Uh, I am shooting this one a little bit early. Uh, it's not actually Christmas, but I decided to give myself some Christmas presents and uh, kind of celebrate and kind of do things a little differently. Normally I have my cigar lit and I'm smoking it. Um, this one I, I want to uh, record the lighting process because it's something unique and something to go with a unique cigar. I also got a unique beer. Uh, let's start off with the cigar. Look at this craziness. It is called the Bohemian Twins by again Diesel Sideshow. Uh, one of the last two cigars. There's one more cigar left. We're going to smoke for New Year's. And this will complete this series. This is called the Calibre cigar. Uh, a little history behind them. Uh, depends on who you ask. Either uh, these cigars were given to factory workers um, to prove that. To prove that they didn't, uh, they usually get like you know one cigar that they can smoke. Um, so they gave them these twisted ones. They gave them three cigars. Usually it's coming in packs of three. Um, and so they give them, you know, the uh, the twisted cigars so they could monitor. If someone wasn't smoking a twisted cigar, um, they were probably stealing from the company. Um, there's also a legend that uh, they'd give you one cigar. For the worker but because they're generational families they give you actually three uh one for grandpa one for dad and one for you um i kind of like the idea it's basically been debunked about you know people stealing cigars that's why they twisted them um the more research i did found that no it uh, is probably just someone tried um twisting uh two or three cigars together and uh this is what they ended up with uh, Calibra means snake. You know, twist a little snake there. Now, the general consensus for most of these cigars is that you're supposed to separate them, smoke one now, smoke one later, or smoke one with a friend. Here's the thing, folks. This is the Sideshow Pack. Uh, I think these are meant to be smoked together. I can't find any information one way or the other. Uh, they're two complementary cigars. And uh, they're also not like a traditional Calibre. Uh, usually Calibres have three, this only has two. Um, normally the cigar bands are around 38 ring gauge. This is more like a 20 ring gauge, really, really small. Um, you know, it's, it's about the size of my pinky actually. So tiny cigar, thin cigar. Uh, so I'm gonna smoke these together. Is that advisable? Probably not. Um, so I was gonna show you the whole process, me cutting the cigar, lighting it, and uh, yeah, continuing on. <coughs> now, normally when I cut a cigar, I've been one who's liking the uh, little wedge cut there. Um, I've actually been enjoying that, good mouth feel and whatnot. If I can't wedge cut it, I try to punch it. So I got my little punch there. Um, but as you can see, I don't think I wanna do the V cut in this one, I don't think it'll turn out well. Um, so I have to go to the Old Faithful Guillotine. Tell you what, I am nervous that right off the shoot, I'm gonna mess this up. Well, folks. Now I'm told that even though they're twisted, well, this would be weird to smoke. It's got a good draw on it. Got a very good draw. All right. Now lighting, usually I use a good old torch. I'll use matches. Um, I'll use a uh, little butane, but we're going fancy tonight, folks. We're going to light this with a cedar stave. <clears throat> I was doing some cedar projects, so I had a few of these lying around, so I figured why not. We're going to light this El Tradicional using the cedar stave. Let's get the stave going here. Now, 
And of course, I'll show pictures of the, of the detailed cigar over there. Got her lit. Um, it's interesting. Interesting smoking two cigars at once. Flavor is actually really mild right now. Kind of surprising because one is a darker Maduro wrapper. That one's kind of a lighter wrapper. I don't know if I'm going to keep smoking these together. Maybe I'll separate them out. Smoke one and then smoke the other uh, to when I get more towards the middle. But for now, I'm keeping this El Traditional. Smoking them both at once. That is unique. You can smoke one cigar, you can smoke the other cigar. You can try to smoke them both. <clears throat> um, not as good of a light up as the other cigars like I've talked about. But not a bad cigar. So folks, we're having a fun cigar. We are having a rather expensive beer. Uh, the Utopias Barrel Age Worldwide Stout. Uh, by Dogfish, uh, when they first came out with this in, I think it was 1993, it was the highest ABV um, beer on the market. <clears throat> uh, what they did with this, though, why this one's extra special, Sam Adams does the Utopias, which is a mix between a beer <clears throat> and like a Chardonnay or a, uh, not a Chardonnay, a Sherry. that they then barrel age. Well, Dogfish bought a bunch of their barrels, barrel aged their world wide stout <clears throat> um, in those barrels. It's supposed to be a flavor like no other. Um, if you know this beer at all, you know it is not a cheap one. Um, it's so festive actually, we're busting out the old school, straight from Ireland, Guinness glass to drink this barrel aged stout. All right. So far, it's keeping a nice little head. Super dark beer. Chews up the light, right? Let's give her a little, a little taste. Okay. Thick, creamy. Damn it, <clears throat> that is probably worth every dollar I paid for it. Um, good choice to go with smoking two cigars here. Ooh, kind of fun, we're burning through the, uh, the rope. Hold on, we're gonna take that off. <laughs> that rope is actually quite flammable. <laughs> Didn't expect that, but here we are. Tonight, what do we have as our snack? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's the last chocolate bread of the year. Um, after this, that chocolate bread is officially over. And I found this hanging around, I just couldn't resist. One big, large Reese's candy bar candy. Merry Christmas, folks. This is kind of my Christmas gift, my Christmas celebration. Kind of do a year in review. I mean, I'll probably do that again once uh, New Year's comes in. But, you know, I'm sitting back. I'm enjoying this. Kind of watching that uh, that twine is like a fuse. That's kind of impressive. So, I've done a lot of videos with you guys. I'm glad I could celebrate Christmas and enjoy unique beer, a unique cigar. Christmas has always been kind of a weird time for me. We'll pivot. We'll say the year in the review for the New Year's. Let's talk about Christmas and the Christmas holiday. Um, it was my mom's absolute all-time favorite holiday. Um, she did Christmas around the world. Uh, so we had Christmas decorations galore. It'd take almost a month to decorate the house. She had Christmas traditions galore. 
as far as uh, getting us Christmas Eve pajamas and a special Christmas Eve dinner, going to church, who could open presents, who hid presents. Um, the tradition unfortunately stopped um, before I was old enough for a multitude of reasons. I think I've talked about since my parents were divorced. Um, the tradition of having a uh, Slovakian uh, kielbasa or... Uh, was it kudigi? No, it wasn't kudigi. It was kudigi. Kielbasa or... Um, oh, it's going to bother me. Uh, there'd be a sausage cook um, late at night. Uh, the older, the parents, and then the older kids would all cook up some of this special Christmas sausage and uh, enjoy that, kind of welcome in the, the Christmas season. Again, I never actually was a part of that tradition because it ended um, when I was old enough, or before I was old enough to actually partake. Um, I do also believe there might have been some adult beverages. Um, and I will admit that Christmas for a while, like any kid, was my favorite time of year. Um, but being an EMS, some holidays tend to lose, uh, lose time, lose uh, meaning after a while. And we'll get back to that. Um, I got to go answer a phone call. All right, sorry about that, we're back. Um, that took a lot longer than just answering a phone call. Um, I had to go pick up some, some uh, my exchange student and a friend of his, who I, uh, I thought they were at a basketball game until nine o'clock. Turns out I was an hour off. But we're here now, so welcome back. Um, what well, I forgot to mention, I'm gonna do a new thing with the thumbnail in these videos and tell me what you think. Um, we'll try to do that again, take a picture of the beer and the cigar I'm going to be smoking, although that would uh, call for some planning, and I don't usually plan with these videos, I just go ahead and shoot them. So back to the topic at hand, uh, Christmas. Um, if any of you have ever been in a family where there's been a divorce, um, I've talked to other people and they say it's true, um, holidays just kind of lose they lose all interest or all uh, meaning. Um, especially when you're younger and have to deal with your parents getting divorced. Um, you actually come to dread holidays. That's what happened with me with Christmas. They just lost a lot of the meaning to it. Um, many of the traditions died out. Um, there was always fights about, you know, who's going to go where for the holidays, uh, for Christmas, you know, what, who's going to be at whose house when, uh, who's going to buy gifts, who's not. Just becomes another pain in the ass. Top on top of that, uh, me working EMS and holidays, again, kind of take a little bit of a, a sidetrack. Um, you have to be able to respond and... Uh, we have the work holidays, um, so they mean less. Um, the day loses its importance. Um, you just, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I got to the point where I just really didn't care for Christmas. Um, or any holiday, really. Again, combination of being an EMS and uh, living through a divorce. We in a divorce family. It really did, just, it lost all its magic, all its fun, all its appeal. Um, even after I got married, um, it, so I, I'll be honest, I just totally forgot that Christmas was coming up one year. I don't think I even got decorations or Christmas gifts or anything for my wife uh, until December 22nd, 23rd. Um, so we had a bit of a come to Jesus meeting with my wife at that point. Uh, we had a child on the way. We knew we were pregnant for our first, for our son. And homeschooling mama kind of laid into me that I needed to start getting more into holidays. Um, as a result, uh, she started putting up the Christmas tree. Uh, 
probably around December 15th when I go out to deer camp, she puts up the Christmas tree. We make sure to decorate on Thanksgiving. Rub salt in the wound a little further. Uh, she made us an elf on the shelf family. Uh, for the first few years, I mean, and it took, I still didn't have that Christmas spirit, that uh, care for the season. Thankfully, once my kids got just a touch older, um, I started to live through them. Seeing the magic in their eyes, seeing them believe in Santa, seeing them get excited for the holiday. Um, start making traditions again. Decide what traditions we continue on, what traditions we wouldn't. Whose traditions, which family. And so I started to get back into the Christmas spirit. Um, started to really appreciate the holiday, appreciate being around family. And yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, it's lost a little bit of its magic because my uh, older children now are know the truth about the season. So... Um, but it's still, we still do a lot with it. We still have a good time. We still do traditions and whatnot. And I do get excited for it. Um, even right now, I, there's a part of me that just wants to have the kids open their gifts. Um, so I can see their faces. So I can show them what I got them. Um, when I spent the year sacrificing and... Saving and scrimping to make sure they have a awesome Christmas. Um, our tree is normally stacked with gifts. Um, well, there's a lot of haters out there who believe you shouldn't do that. But honestly, even if we get all six of our kids only five gifts, that's, uh, that's 30 gifts we have to put around a tree. So it adds up quickly. I did have a lady who kind of lectured me a little bit online about, you know, being spoiling my kids. But again, I had explained to her, I've got six of them, seven this year. Um, so that's a lot of presents, a lot of wrapping, a lot of unwrapping. Um, again, I'm getting in, I, I do have the Christmas spirit now. Uh, after getting off the rig, dealing with my childhood stuff, again, it can be fun. It, it's enjoyable. Um, I still don't look forward to it because I know it's a lot of work. Um, it hits the pocketbook really hard. I really should do the Christmas account. A lot of banks up here will let you put money into a specific account pretty much throughout the year. And then you can use it at the end of the year um, to buy presents. And I should do that, kind of like I do with the kids' vacation money that they made from Farmer's Market. It's not in our regular account. So, you know, I, I know that money for Christmas gifts is in our regular account. Um, it sits there. But to just see it go, that, that hurts. <laughs> that hurts. Uh, to see it disappear within a, about two months of paying off credit card bills. Or on Black Friday. Or on the, oh shoot, I found this and it's really cool. I should get it for my child. So, yeah. That's Christmas for me in a, in a nutshell. Every year I try to get a little more Christmas spirit. The last couple of years I've really leaned heavily um, into the church. I'm doing more church activities, going to the Christmas vigils. Um, our new trick actually is we... We go to Christmas Vigil, we did this last year, and because uh, both me and homeschooling mom are quite organized and tactical and able to respond, um, we're able to get all the Christmas gifts underneath the tree in the time it takes the kids to get in the car, and us then to get to the car, and the kids are none the wiser. They keep saying Santa cheated, came while we were at Mass. Fair enough, fair enough. Can't disagree with that logic there.
This year we are continuing on with our, th our, our Christmas Eve dinner. Uh, dinner consists of nothing but sweet treats, summer sausage, cheeses, a little bit of jerky thrown in there because we got some of that venison jerky going. Uh, but there are rules. Uh, one, once the prayers are said, no one can get up for any reason. Um, no phones, uh, no answering the door, no answering the phone. And then number two, uh, no one can get up to open up their Christmas Eve gifts until everyone has finished every speck of food on their plate. No exceptions this year. They're all old enough. All right, maybe Abigail, our youngest, will get a little bit of an exception, but uh, no, no one else. Actually, we're pretty firm with that rule. Uh, noise the, the piss out of the kids. Most of the older ones have kind of gotten with the routine and uh, know what is expected of them. Know what they have to do to make sure that they aren't the one who is uh, delaying opening up the Christmas Eve gifts and the official start of Christmas. Uh, we also, as a tradition, always do the Santa tracker. Track Santa's flight path through NORAD. Thank you, NORAD. Thank you, Air Force, for protecting Santa on his, uh, on his flight. Unlike some... People who are less educated, uh, we greatly appreciate that the uh, federal government looks out for him and tracks him and guides him. So thanks for that, Nora. That's one of our our traditions, new tradition. That we're hoping to pass on to our kids. Uh, the kids usually do some sort of Santa trap, Santa trapping plan. Try to catch Santa, keep mom and dad on our toes. Um, that is a tradition I wish I never would have started, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, I think it'll be a pretty good year this year. I'm especially sharing our Christmas traditions with our exchange student. I'm looking forward to having some time off from work. Uh, things have definitely ratcheted up at work. We're definitely uh, starting to get really heavy into the new position. Learning my new responsibilities. Uh, it's a good thing, though. I'm enjoying that. But that doesn't change the fact that um, it's getting pretty serious. Not too many other uh, big updates for Christmas. Like I said, it's still uh, a few days away. Um, I'm recording this on the Monday before Christmas. It'll post the Monday after, just to keep things consistent. So, yeah. I hope everyone had a very Merry Christmas. I'm hoping and praying that my Christmas will go well and we'll have good food and good fun and Santa will, will escape uh, being captured again this year. Um, hopefully you out there are enjoying your Christmas traditions. Um, hopefully you can keep those strong with you and your family. Um, if the season has lost meaning, try and seek it out. Um, again, look religiously, uh, look towards others, maybe get lost in someone else's tradition. Uh, it's kind of got me a little bit back into the spirit of it. Um, but if nothing else, I'll just try to take some time to find some joy. Uh, this is a dark time of year, literally. Um, some of the sh shortest days, so it's good to reflect and look at hope and kind of recenter yourself. Hopefully you haven't lost that Christmas spirit. Again, if you have, try to get it back. But anyway, um, this one's getting long. I kind of knew it would be. I'm still smoking my, I'm doing it all right, huh? My Calibra, my Bohemian Twins. Um, the beer is still tasty. Bread's good, and ladies and gentlemen, I haven't broken into it yet, but I'm killing this beast tonight. Anyway, folks, uh, Merry Christmas. Hope you're all staying safe out there, and we'll see you on the next one.